Welcome back everyone. In this short video tutorial, we're going to cover the basic operation of this table saw right here. Now the table saw is a tool you might have used, maybe not. In either case, we're going to cover how to use it and how to change the blades on it. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the table saw is not meant for cutting these types of pieces of wood. So a 2x4 or something like that, you're not going to use that to cut across this 2x4. What you are going to use the table saw for is for a large panel like this. This is a piece of MDF and we're going to go ahead and cut it down to size. So first things first, as always, make sure you have your safety glasses on and your fingertips to your elbows are free and clear of any sort of entanglement hazards. Let's get started. So we're going to be cutting this piece of MDF today, which is a thick, dense particle board and will make a great example cut. We'll take a quick tour of our Delta Unisaw table saw. It's quite large. Down below we have our on off switch with our safety pin installed and our big red emergency off button right below it. Behind that we have our height adjustment wheel that controls the height of the blade when we're cutting and there's a scale there showing angle measurements. The other wheel on the side here controls the angle of the blade so if you needed to make an angled cut, we could assist you in doing so. On top we have a safety guard that's always going to be installed unless there's a specialty cut that needs to be made, but mostly it's going to be installed. Up top we have our guide fence that makes certain that our cut is going to be straight and that can be adjusted and it has a handy scale on it so you don't need to measure and mark your wood before you cut it. Down below, we've got a number of tools for making safe cuts. If you needed to make a cut that you couldn't execute safely, you would use one of those to push the material through while maintaining a safe distance from the blade. So a number of different options, depending on the application. These wrenches will be used to change the blade, which we'll demonstrate here shortly. And the table saw can be used with a number of materials, and the material dictates which blade you'll use so we can change the blades out. Quick safety note, this pin should always be installed in the on switch unless you are actively cutting the wood, so make certain that that's installed. The first step in changing out the blade is going to be to remove this red blade cover, so we'll set that aside, and then we'll lock this blade cover into place so that it's out of our way during the blade change. Now we can look inside and see what kind of hardware we're going to need to change this blade. So we can see if I rotate this, a square wrench will be needed on the right and on the left, a simple hex wrench. So I'll go ahead and grab the square wrench you can see here. It's bent, so we want that bend to be facing outward. So I'll go ahead and place that square wrench down in there with the bend facing to the right. I'll grab the hex wrench, and I'll want to use the large hex, not the small hex. So the small hex is used for another thing. We'll go down and we'll place that hex around the nut. You might have to rotate the blade a little bit. And this is reverse threaded, so you want to pull it towards the operator and then spin it out. It's helpful to keep your hand underneath it so that if you do drop that nut, it falls into your hand and not into the cabinet. You'll notice there is a washer. You want to get that washer before we take out the blade, otherwise that washer will fall into the cabinet and we'll have to go in and fish it out. Now we can remove the blade. Let's grab our blade box and flipping it over, we can open the blade box and we'll start unscrewing that nut there. You'll notice that these blades are marked with what the specific material to be used is. So in that case that's a plywood blade which is what we're going to use. The blade that was installed is a 2x4 ripping blade, thick wood. You can see that engraving there as well. So depending on what type of wood you're cutting will dictate which type of blade you need to use. 
Let's put that back together and we'll set it aside. So when we're replacing the blade, there are two ways we can put it on and one is incorrect. When you place it like this, the teeth are backwards. They're facing up, which means they're gonna rub instead of cut the material. So we wanna make sure that the teeth are facing the operator and are pointed downward. That's gonna cut the material properly. We'll go ahead and slide our blade on with the teeth facing the operator. And then we'll place our washer back on with the concave section pointing outward like so. We don't want the nut, we don't want the washer facing out as it will not securely clamp the blade to the arbor. So we'll place the washer back on and we'll grab our nut and we'll thread it away from the operator as it is reverse threaded. So not righty tighty lefty loosey, it's righty loosey lefty tighty. We'll grab our wrench, place it on the nut, hopefully, and then give it a little bit of a tighten. Not too much, just a, enough to snug it up. You don't need to over tighten it as it will make it really hard to remove the blade. We'll go ahead and replace our red blade cover back onto the table. And now we're ready to adjust our fence. So when adjusting the fence, don't use one hand. The better way is to place your hand on the side and then firmly move it with your hand. Otherwise, you run the risk of the fence popping off. And when the fence pops off, it's a little tricky to get it back on. So we wanna try and keep that on at all times. When we're lining up our cut, we simply line up and tighten it. We're gonna use the outer diamond to measure. So whatever that outer diamond lands on is how big the piece will be. We need to raise our blade up so that the blade actually cuts the material. You want the blade to be about a half inch or so above the material you're cutting. A special safety consideration is that the table saw is not to be used to make a cross cut such as this. When you do a cross cut like this on the table saw, the piece tends to get crooked and that can cause what's called kickback where it sends the part flying towards the user. So we do not want to cross cut on the table saw. Cross cutting is typically done on something like the chop saw or the compound miter saw. Speaking of kickback, we want to make sure that our wood is flush up against the fence when we're cutting. If it's not, it can get crooked and that will also cause kickback or it will cause your part to burn on the blade because it'll be rubbing. So we want to make sure it's flush up against that fence. We're ready to start cutting. So let's go ahead, remove our pin, turn on our blade and make sure that we're flush. And all we're going to do is push it through the blade just like so. Turn off the blade and make sure you wait until the blade is stopped completely spinning before removing your scrap piece. Sometimes we need to make a cut and we can't safely place our hands in the cut zone so we need to use a tool. This is called a feather board and this feather board is going to press this wood horizontally up against the fence. So we'll simply place the pressure on the side of the board and tighten the feather board. Now you can see that the pressure is applied sideways to the wood. For this cut, we're gonna use a yellow push stick to safely push our material through. So again, we'll simply push the material through using our push stick until it's all the way through and then I'll push my wood all the way out and onto the floor. I'll turn off the blade and wait until the blade has completely stopped spinning before I remove my scrap piece of wood. I'll then lower the blade and replace the pin. To clean up, grab an air gun and blow the dust onto the floor and sweep it up. You're all set.